Hello, everybody, and welcome to this fantastic Zoom we got lined up with Malkiel Adari from Gita Winery. Malkiel is joining us all the way from Israel, Hoda Sharon. It's about four o'clock in the morning there. Um, we we sent uh, we sent loud noises to the house and woke him up, got him out of. Just kidding. It's harvest season, so Malkiel's been up three o'clock in the morning for for a week now, um, and we're really lucky to have him here today during this really really busy season. Malkiel, let me uh, throw it over to you and maybe just introduce yourself and your winery and give us a little bit of a backstory uh, of wh what you do there. Okay, uh, good evening or good morning, everyone. Yeah, at least for me, it's good morning. Um, I'm delighted to uh, join this uh, Zoom uh, meeting um, at kosherwine.com. And uh, my name is Malkiel Adari. And uh, uh, I established my, or we, I would say we, because my wife and me uh, together on this business. Uh, and so we started our um, uh, winery in 2008 with the uh, first time making our wine. Um, and we started with two demigens, actually. So, you know, this, this bottle, a big bottle with, with, the, with the wine inside. Um, and um, uh, of course, um, we found ourselves like uh, making long story short. Um, uh, we found ourselves like a, a year or two later with two barrels uh, in the patio in our house. And um, of course, we uh, started to learn how to make wine because the first wine that uh, I made in 2008 uh, was not so good, I would say. Uh, uh, I would say that we just drop it into the switch <laughs> because it was not so good. Uh, uh, actually, it more it more uh, say not not something related to wine. So we decided to go and learn, and my wife uh, just uh, um, told me that uh, she registered me registered me to a uh, to a wine course in Sorek Winery, which is uh, which is one of the wine making school in Israel. Uh, of course, I uh, asked if I can uh, bring my spouse with me, and they said okay. And uh, we started to learn together how to make wine. Um, going on with the, uh, this uh, winemaking is that my passion was like uh, uh, love to wine. I started with a, when I was a very little guy when I was stealing the, the kiddush wine from my father. And, uh, you know, always he saw that the level of the wine is not exactly what is expected. But uh, he didn't, uh, at the beginning, he didn't know that I did this stuff. So wine is uh, with me when, when I was very young. Uh, then, of course, um, I started to buy very good wines with a lot of money. And my wife said, okay, enough is enough. And uh, uh, now you have to make your own wine because also my grandfather uh, in Yemen, he made, uh, made wine and, 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 you know, Arak and all this stuff. So he said, you have it in your family. So actually you can do it yourself and we can save money. I think she regrets it until today. And we'll talk about it later. Uh, okay, soon enough, we, uh, we understood that uh, to make a good wine, you need um, uh, very good grapes, uh, good um, raw material. Uh, so we started seeking for good, uh, good um, uh, vineyards, uh, excellent vineyards. Uh, and then we come across the first problem because most of them are already occupied by the big ones. So uh, we always try to, uh, uh, you know, trying to get, I don't know, what, 200 kilos or half a ton of this and to make, to make it like, you know, what we call in Israel under the table. <laughs> Meaning it's not what's straightforward. Uh, but later on, I think with the time we, we gain some experience and we find very good, good ones and uh, we started to make a very good wine. I took the uh, winery management course, uh, small winery uh, in the Ariel University. Then uh, uh, I took the advanced, advanced technical wine tasting course. And lately I did the Spirit Education Trust level two. Like how long ago, what stage in your career did you, did you start making wine? Like what was going on in your life at the time? Career-wise, and yeah, uh, yeah, I was I was like working like 35 years or 40 years in the high tech. 
I just uh, went to, uh, I just retired uh, one and a half year ago um, uh, from the high tech SAP. I was in SAP. And um, uh, I worked together uh, the last 10 years before I retired, I started my winery. So it was a bit, a bit late, uh, but um, it was so interesting. So I was like working in the days in the SAP, uh, you know, you know, high tech from, from sunrise to sunset, even more. And uh, then I came home and, and working with the wine. So it was very, really uh, very, very um, intensive life, but I like it. And the last thing that do the last, last four years, I was also planted my, my own winery and later on I will understand why I did it uh, when we talk about how to start your winery. Uh, so, uh, and what is the challenges of the winemaking in Israel? So I planted my own winery. This year I started to uh, uh, the, the, the first harvest. So already I have uh, in my tanks here, the, the French Colombard. Uh, my own vineyard uh, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, also Chardonnay, my own vineyard and uh, uh, Sauvignon Blanc. So this is the whites that are already now fermenting um, in, in my, in my, in my uh, uh, winery. So this is very, very excited because the first time you make your own wine from your own grapes, uh, this is very challenging and, uh, and uh, very, uh, a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of gladness, a lot of happiness in the family. Everybody was joining and uh, making the harvest with the kids and every time. So it was like uh, with the grand grandsons and granddaughters. It was really, really something that uh, it's a peak of your life, a point that you have a peak in your life when you fulfill. So uh, before this, you would you would actually buy grapes from other farmers, and, yeah, yeah. and now you actually have your own vineyards. But your winery, uh, where is it? Tell, where is it located for people who haven't been to your winery? And I've been there a yeah. few times. <laughs> Yeah, I, was com- I was coming through the next the next description uh, because uh, actually I, I uh, in my house I have some kind of basement um, so uh, a big one actually it was a patio with a basement with a with a car garage coming all together to have one one uh, winery uh, I don't have I don't have a, 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 um, I, I was thinking to make my my, my the, 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 the session. Uh, down in the winery, but I don't have a, a Wi-Fi over there, so I'm making from from the one of the rooms of the house. But anyway, uh, uh, I will I will describe it this in this way. Uh, my my bedroom was actually between the uh, garage car which I fermented with my wine, and I have to go through my bedroom in order to go to the bar room in the other side. So actually, we uh, we sleep with the wine, we hear the wine, we smell the wine. Um, like uh, four or five years until I, I decided that I'm uh, I'm going up to the to the other levels in my house, uh, in order to uh, to uh, give more room. Uh, and my my bedroom just it became uh, became the uh, the, um, uh, the tasting room and and so forth. Actually, I'm uh, self-educated, or you know, I'm learning myself. I, I cannot I cannot learn and you know in front frontal uh, way. So I learned everything by myself. So also uh, from chemistry, I ran out from the school, you know, through the doors and I came back through the window because I have to learn it in order to make. And I have a very nice lab because it's uh, something that in a, in a, in a homemade or, or home winery, this is, uh, this is rare because I do all, most of, I would say most of my uh, tests of wine tests in my lab. And SO2, uh, 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 um, uh, I make also um, uh, alcohol test and almost all the tests that I need. Some of them I need the very expensive uh, equipment, so I do it in, in the in the in the big winery's lab. But yes, I have a, a very nice uh, lab in my in my uh, winery. We got a very good uh, very good feedback from the market, also from uh, contest awards and the critics writers. So it comes out that uh, I get a lot of uh, f- good very good feedback. So I started to make. More wine, and I come to five five thousand bottles in uh, nineteen. I think it was like uh, two thousand. Sorry, two thousand and uh, and um, uh, um, it was like two thousand seventeen or sixteen. Already, I'm making uh, like five thousand uh, bottles uh, a year. Uh, and how much are you producing now? Your next uh, in 
20, what's your production level going to be? It's going to be like between 10,000 to 12,000 uh, bottles a year. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how, how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go pass through this, uh, <laughs> this harvest because it's really this time, I, I would say I expanded, David, he didn't, he didn't see it, but I, I expanded my, uh, uh, my, my winery, now it's bigger. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I added some, uh, some uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, 25 square meter uh, to it. So it will help me uh, and to- storage And barrel storage? Yeah, also, yeah. Uh, also bar storage, I moved from two, uh, the, 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 the barrique, which is uh, 20, 225 mm -hmm. into three, 300. And the next year it will be 500 because I expanded my one year. So now I have, I can, I can push through the door 500, yeah, uh, uh, yeah 500 liter. Those are going to be for the wines or for the red wines as well? No, it, uh, it's beginning. I, I started with the, with the white wines uh, for, for 500. Uh, 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 but I, I think soon enough I will go with all my winery for 500. I think it's uh, uh, give the wine more uh, time to get a subtle, uh, uh, um, uh, I would say, a process or, inf or influence of the barrel on, on the wine. And it gets more, more uh, let's say, what's uh, more gentle wine, more subtle wine, uh, which I like very much. So now, before we continue talking about the winery, I actually have a bottle of wine right here. I was expecting to start drinking already. We've been talking, but uh, you know, we hear, for those of you who are not familiar, this is you know the Gito Shani, uh, fantastic label. You could talk about that uh, if you know uh, Malkiel to, yeah. to describe the label in a moment. But why don't we just maybe hear from you a little bit about this wine, the Shani, what goes into it, what it, you know, maybe some tasting notes, what it pairs with, anything you want to tell us about this wine. I'll drink it while you talk about it. How's that? Yeah, this is some something that uh, I started uh, in 2016, uh, having the uh, Carignan. It's a very, uh, it's a old vine, old vine the vineyard, uh, like 45 years, and uh, with Syrah, together with Syrah. And I think this is uh, one of the wine that I'm very proud of because it's low alcohol. It's very, uh, very, um, I think it's 13 and a half, right? Or 13 and a half or something? Yeah, 14. Yeah. 14. Yeah, 14. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, not to exceed the 14, uh, uh, 14 uh, uh, percent alcohol. Uh, I believe in the low alcohol wine and uh, the wine is uh, very, very uh, complex. Uh, it's a wine that is more going into the, uh, I would say the uh, uh, spice, the spice, uh, uh, spice area. Um, is, sweetness is very, it's very low, but uh, I think uh, uh, this is a very good wine that accompany any, any dish of, uh, of meat and uh, stew uh, and something like this. Um, uh, I like to make this kind of wine. I have the other one, I dome, I will mention it, which is made from four, four, uh, uh, four varietals, um, usually. And maybe in this point, I will, I will just add something that I believe in, uh, is that uh, I believe in, in, in uh, let's say, uh, 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 varietals that are very successful and thrives in Israel uh, hot weather. And I don't do any Cabernet or something that needs a more, uh, let's say, moderate or cold weather. Uh, so I'm trying to make my wine from a uh, thing that is growing in Israel very well. And for me, it's one step to say that this is an Israeli wine. Uh, I'll give one example that I always I give it because uh, uh, it's a very good argument, is that the Petit Verdot is, is mentioned as, a, as or considered as a, as a Bordeaux area, uh, uh, very tall, but I, I challenge this because, uh, you know, it's called Petit Verdot. Petit Verdot means uh, small and green uh, because every year, uh, most of the years, it's not so developed in, 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 in Bordeaux. So you use it from time to time. Uh, but in Israel, you can make, and there's a lot of winery in Israel doing this, uh, very tall Petit Verdot, which is great. And this year I made also uh, 100 bottles just for me. <laughs> for me? On <laughs> you, of course. Um, so, so just uh, to to see how it develop, and maybe I will go into it also in my in my portfolio. Uh, so, so this is one argument why I think that uh, you have to stick to your whatever succeeded in your country 
and your terrors. This is something that you have to stick and make your story and make your uh, your uh, uh, wines out of this. What what what's going in your land? And very successful, regardless of all whatever classic things or whatever talking in the world. I don't care about it. I care about what's going on here. If it's uh, called Malbec and it's growing very good, uh, because you see, look look what the, what the French and uh, what the Argentine did to the Malbec. Uh, they took it from the France, uh, French actually, and, and made uh, even 10 times better Malbec wine from there. So you have to stick with whatever, whatever is, uh, thrives in your country and try to make the best out of it. This is my, my first belief uh, in making wine. And with the uh, Adome, you have things like Marcelan that you put in there. Yeah, yeah I started with Marcelan and because I like very much. And by the way, I'm going to harvest next week uh, my own Marcelan. So this is another 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 dream come true. Uh, I stopped with the Marcelan in 2014 and uh, went to the other other uh, uh, grape because uh, Israel it's very hard to to get a Marcelan. Uh, yeah, it's planted very uh, very few. Uh, so I start, I, I decided that I'm going to plant uh, uh, one of these, and if it's go well, uh, I will even add more uh, more uh, quantity to this. Uh, because I like very much the Marcelan. Uh, the, the Adom is making from Petit, Petit, Petit Syrah, uh, Syrah, Petit Verdou, and uh, Grenache. And uh, just for you to know, I, I started with a Petit Syrah as a base, uh, the, the base wine of the Adom, and added the, others one, the other ones. <clears throat> and uh, what I did in, uh, in 2018, Red, I just uh, switched it a bit, keeping the, 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 the same style, but I Switch it a bit and make give the uh, the Grenache to to talk more than the petit. Uh, it's same 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 varietals, but the, the Grenache is uh, the, the the majority of it because I like the Grenache very much. And, um, and, and this this is uh, 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 the Adom that I have. I have two Adoms and I have also uh, white wines. You want to talk about the design on the label a little bit? Yeah, I, will, no, I I can show it myself because I prepared one. You know. Uh, hope they, they see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, th this is this is uh, actually took uh, me and uh, another guy that uh, is a designer and is a very good campaigner. And uh, we talk about one and a half year about this logo. And this logo actually have two things because I believe uh, uh, I believe in the past uh, to take uh, to lean on the past, but to go forward in the future and to take the past as a base and uh, develop it and improve it and uh, make it better. So let's talk about the Gito down there. Uh, just imagine to yourself that, um, you know, the the um, New Hebrew is uh, a script that you write it uh, not not, um, not not in the Torah like. It's like more fluent, more, uh, more script one. And um, what I said to myself, what will happen if in the ancient time, uh, a, a, a guy need to write it on a stone and had to uh, you know to uh, take a hammer and uh, and uh, to to make it he will make uh, 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 straight lines so I take the gimel in the, and make it like this and the tab of course he make it as short as he can because it's hard work uh, so it's like triangle and uh, okay the bob is the same so so not uh, not much and then I took the uh, the uh, uh, how do you call it uh, the nikud you know the uh, from Hebrew punctuation. The punctuation, yeah, from from the the New Hebrew. But I took also, you see, the apostrophe in the on, on the on the the last letter is something that from the ancient Hebrew. Which, if you want to say uh, Gito or to say Gito, you just put the uh, the apostrophe in the in the right place. So this is about the name of the of the um, my winery. Actually, I started from the uh, the um, the name Gitot. And then when I, when I do branding, and we can talk about it later, when you, when you say when you start your winery, what what you, what 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 are the thing that you have to do uh, is uh, uh, in the in the branding. So um, um, uh, I thought about it uh, uh, very strongly, and uh, it took me one and a half year to get to this uh, gitot. So I just removed the the, the uh, last letter gitot, the last tav, because it's also my development, and because gitot is general. It's like mountains. It's like a, something is very general. It's not something that related to you, but when I took the tough out, it's it's making my own because my, it's gito. It's my it's his git his gut. His gut is gito in Hebrew. So I uh, put it this way. Then the second thing that I was very 
if, if, if I said that I mentioned it, he thought it's not, it's not for nothing. It's just something that I, in Israel, I was like traveling from the north. And I was like in the, in the generation that I, uh, I from Ramat Golan to Sinai, uh, to Sharm Sheikh, I was, uh, was uh, working in, in uh, Abu Rodez and, uh, and, uh, and uh, serving in the army in, in Sharm Sheikh. So I, I saw the country from the north to the south. And believe me, every, every uh, so sorry about my, my French, but every, everywhere you spit, there's a, there's a gut in Israel. So that's, uh, that's, uh, and I investigated this, what this gut means, uh, how it build and, uh, and all this stuff. And I found out that there's two prototypes of, of, uh, of, uh, of gut. One of them, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if it's rounded or squared. Uh, it's, it's just uh, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the gut inside of it is where, where, where all, when you, when you step around here, around you step on the grapes, it goes inside to the, to the, to the, uh, to the, what we call bore, we call it the place where, where all the, the, the yeah. And then uh, the other one is that the, the, the this, this uh, square is outside. So the two types, what I did here, I just some, made something that is uh, really uh, doesn't, doesn't go in your mind because uh, I took the uh, bore from the outside, put it inside, but I, 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 I make all the, I, I, um, uh, all the holes here, are, 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 are uh, you know, uh, yeah, closed. And uh, this is open. So this sounds like very interesting and uh, it took us uh, a lot and consulting with a lot of people. And they say, yeah, there's something that uh, work on the mind and give the attention. Because uh, for me, this is something that uh, always you have to think that your wine is, uh, how, how your wine can stand out everywhere between other Legos. This is the game. Because the first glance is, if you got it, then you, it's interesting. Then you go there and you hold your bar, you, you hold the bottle in your hand because you want, it's very interesting. So this is one one thing that uh, is very important when making wine. Uh, although it's not the, the, the most important thing, but this is very important as well. So this is about the uh, the logo. Every year I do some experiments in my winery. This is the the heart of the the, the winery to make experiments. Uh, for example. Uh, last year, I did uh, Petit Syrah together with Viognier, uh, co-fermented uh, in the same way. It's, it's a good result. Um, another experiment that I did is uh, what I call a Dim Dumim, a uh, very small uh, quantity, which is a very nice wine, uh, which is kind of between rosé and red. So it's like the Katom in Lavan, uh, the orange in Lavan, it's uh, in, in Grenache, in, uh, sorry, in, uh, in Rosé. So it's not a Rosé, uh, it looks like Rosé, it's, uh, it's very confusing. Uh, and, 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 but it tastes like uh, more like red, but it's uh, light as a Rosé. And so you just swing between the, the, the Rosé and the, and, the, and the red, uh, which is, I got a very good, uh, 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 very good uh, feedback about it from a lot of uh, uh, people that uh, consider very, uh, uh, um, let's say, known about the uh, knowledge about wine. Interesting coming up. You told us a little bit about you're using Viognier now. Uh, you know, the you're going to start bottling some some uh, single varietals, which you you haven't done, or you're you're exploring that opportunity. Uh, I don't know if we talked talked about the Petit Syrah. Uh, no. I would, which I've tasted, yeah. but maybe you can you can yeah. tell us a little bit about that wine specifically, and and like if you know what if you have plans to continue with uh, certain things that seem to work, and and if you're gonna you know you do love making blends, but if your single varietals are really good as well, how do you how do you make those those tough decisions? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a very good question. Uh, okay, I think that is part of my development. Uh, my experience in, in winemaking, and uh, I like it very much because it gives me another uh, aspect, another uh, <clears throat> view of the of the wine, of winemaking. Uh, so at the moment, I will go in uh, small quantities of this, uh, as as you see from the Syrah. Maybe I will increase a bit, but it will not be the majority of the wine. Um, and uh, uh, that's the way I go. For example, this year, uh, the, the Petit Syrah that I did last year is 100% uh, um, um, uh, whole cluster, whole bunch. 
Um, the way I do it is uh, really a bit risky because uh, what I do, I just put the, uh, first of all, I need to have the uh, very, very healthy uh, uh, grapes. So in Petit Sira, if you know Petit Sira, it's very hard. It's very hard uh, uh, varietal uh, to, uh, to grow. Um, but when you get one, when you get one, that's why I cannot make it, you know, every year. Uh, when you get one, this first go to, uh, to uh, as a complete bunch into the, into the, to the fermentation uh, container. And I just close it for uh, 14 years in 30, uh, 30 uh, uh, degrees Celsius, 30, 31. For 14 days or hours? 30, no, 14 days. 14 days, okay. 14 days, yeah. And it's, uh, it's sealed uh, for 14 days. Uh, I only only God uh, knows what's going in, say, inside of it. But this is the one of the riskiest thing that uh, well I don't sleep much uh, thinking about it. Uh, but I think uh, the result when it comes good, it's 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 very very rewarding. Um, you you um, you know the petit Syrah is something that has uh, everything from everything. It has a lot of acidity, a lot of color, a lot of tannin. A lot of things and it's like uh, you know i always compare it to the uh, when you go to the gym there's two actually two guys one of them that is a bodybuilding which is uh, has uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, pump uh, you know the the, the, the the muscles so yeah and and you have the uh, the other one which is athlete that has everything that the other one but it's like it doesn't so uh, much uh, you know look uh, i don't know big and and, and, and strong but is is not not less stronger so uh, but it's it's more like uh, it's more like uh, uh, has everything uh, the muscles everything but in in a nice way in a proportion way which is very gentle uh, so that's what I do to the petit sirah I take it from a, uh, what you call it the um, what we call it in Israel to tame the beast and uh, to take one it's uh, that's very very strong and I have one from uh, 2013 only in the library which is 100% petit sirah uh, sold out uh, at that time. And I uh, have a few bottles uh, left, which is a great wine. But uh, you know, this is the the, the big guy. And uh, and um, today I make it more more gentle, more subtle. But it has everything, and the taste is very uh, uh, different. That <clears throat> you have a bit from the normal petit sirah that you uh, you do in a in a in a normal uh, uh, <clears throat> standard uh, uh, fermentation. And uh, I'm going to go on with this one because this year I invited more Petit Sirah in order to make uh, from that vineyard that I got the, the other one. And uh, hopefully I will get some. Uh, and I'm going to make uh, more of this. And also in the Adon blend, when you see Syrah, it's it's with the, it's uh, always with the, with the stems. And when you see when you see uh, that I, I write uh, Petit Sirah, it always almost most of the time is whole bunch. Uh, because I believe in this, and this is going to be one uh, the protocol of the my winery again to go with this uh, with this uh, style, and uh, I'll tell you uh, the reason behind it. The reason behind it that in Israel we have a very hot uh, uh, country, which we have the sunlight from up, but we have also the radiation from the ground. So so um, we have some kind of you know when you take a sugar uh, and you and you boil it, it comes like uh, to have a, a how do you call it. Um, it's like uh, 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 forgot the name of it, David. You help me. Uh, when you when you yeah when you when you when you when you cook a sugar, you get like, some kind. You're talking about like I don't know. I'm trying to. I don't know where you're going with it. What's it? Maybe in Hebrew. Yeah, in Hebrew it's um, now I have to switch language. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we call it here. Uh, it's like um, what happens to the sugar. Yeah, the sugar is like uh, well, I, giving, giving you can give you give you something that is not it's not so freshy. It's something that is cooked. Uh, uh, so so the wine is not tasty. It's not fresh. What right. the stem, what the stems and whole bunch is doing uh, because of the pyrazine that you have in the in the in the in the in the bunch itself, it takes it takes this uh, this maturity or this. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, cooked uh, 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 in, in the grape and make it more fresh and make it like uh, more more vibrant and more young and all this stuff. So for me in Israel, I think it's a, a must protocol to to make for red wines. Uh, this procedure uh, each time you had you add another quantity of stems or 
maybe not not a whole bunch but uh, sometimes you know 50 percent or something like this but for me it's a protocol because it should go like this because uh, that's what you what you drink in my wine freshness uh, uh vibrant thing that uh, gives you uh, uh, more subtle things and more less less um, uh, sweetness uh, uh, and more fruity and uh, sweetness is fruity two, two different things Right, so you were talking about like some some people like to leave the the grapes and harvest a little bit later when the when the bricks are a little bit higher when the sugar level is higher and then they end up with like very uh, baked fruit exactly type of- yeah but, but but what what I'm trying to say is more, even more than that in Israel you don't have to bake to have to to a high level maturity in order to get this uh, this uh, cooked uh, uh, things because you uh, Because also when you start to have like in I uh, say uh, not in 26 percent of bricks what do you call like in 23 and a half already we started to get this this uh, this taste that I don't like uh, uh, so because we are a very hot country uh, and, and that that's the way to overcome what the nature what you cannot overcome in the nature and the growing you could do it in wine making that's what I maybe I say another thing that I believe in in the past I thought that um, Uh, uh, a good wine is made on on the vineyard and it's it's not 100% true it's a half it's a 50% true because uh, uh, yes it's you have to get a, a good but but a very good uh, raw material but uh, it's not enough if uh, if the winemaker and uh, cannot uh, understand the, the fruit understand what he gets and uh, they try to to do whatever the best he can do with this one and not what he think to do Uh, uh, so th- this is for me like 50-50. So it's not, uh, yes, you have to have very good uh, grapes, but you have to, be, to have a, a, a very good uh, winemaker as well. For sure. No, and, that, and, and uh, we're lucky to, to be able to get your wines here in the U.S. Obviously, um, you know, it's a small winery and we were fortunate to, to meet you even when your production was, was even smaller than it is today. And work out uh, an agreement where we uh, represent your wines exclusively here so obviously they're only available on kosherwine.com we're also able to help you know uh, you know with the pricing so it doesn't go through so many middlemen and we're able to bring it to market I think it's roughly the same price that people pay in in the stores in Israel they'll pay here maybe an extra dollar or two because we have to still pay for importing on the ships and containers and but but more or less it's a it's the same price and So uh, you know like it's everybody everybody wins in this situation yeah just I just prepared some, some just highlights I don't go into details but I think uh, first of all that you, when you uh, when you start a winery you have to ask yourself you if you really very very want want it very much mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah because when I started to learn everybody is running to start learning how to make a wine of course and they 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 feel the they, they feel the, the grapes the, it's more tangible is something that that you you do something about it's a labor you know, hard working and all this stuff so so you feel okay I'm doing something and I get some results and I can see it right away and I uh, and it's very exciting I, I I understand that but I think you first have to ask yourself do you really really want it very much this is the first question the next question would be that you have to ask yourself is uh, Uh, is a hobby is it a hobby or is it going to be a commercial it's going to be something that you make you want to make money a bit out of it or something like this um, so uh, this is a uh, two thing that you have to uh, uh, in other words it's it's love for wine or a business you have to decide this is something that you cannot overcome uh, in my process it started with a with a hobby and loving wines but uh, soon enough it's a moving target and uh, uh, this is the, this is what you call the the uh, Uh, the virus of the uh, of the wine making uh, because uh, when the when the season has come you 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 have a you have a f- uh, butterfly in your stomach and uh, you get excited and uh, this is very very something that uh, you have to feel it in your in your uh... and the second question people ask is uh, okay how much does it cost to set up a small winery uh, I would say that it's the same question is say how much uh, uh, how much uh, do an orphan pens cost? So it depends okay so it depends a lot of things uh, uh, and uh, you have to consult with people and uh, uh, depends if it's you build it uh, also as a home garage winery if you planned in advance and uh, uh, you have to set up how many how many uh, bottles you have to make you a year if you were to plan if it's not a plan it's a hobby it's okay you do whatever and uh, you drink it with your friends you sell some you know to whatever and you enjoy and you have to stop there 
And if you go to commercial, life is getting uh, a little bit uh, crowded and, uh, and uh, more, more difficult um, and more complex. Um, another thing that I would say that uh, you have to position your, your winery. This is a very important, uh, very important topic. If you go to, a, 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 to the direction that you have to make some money out of it or some business-wise, um, do you want the, to make an LT squad at your winery or um, general one, uh, table winery, or if you, um, you want to export like <laughs> to kosher time.com or not? Uh, this is a different world. <laughs> uh, is it kosher? Is there, we want tourists uh, to come and um, what varieties you want to make? All of them you have to make to, to you want to go to whites and, and rose or red or just red or just white. Uh, this is a very important decision that you have to make. Um, want to make only red sweet wines uh, as I do the the the, uh, the uh, port that you're gonna get um, then I think this lead to a very important point not to start from making wine if I, if I get give a tip but start from uh, what I call um, 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 wine model what is your model take a take a piece of paper or excel today and uh, and uh, you can start put put all the inputs over there and how many how many bottles and see what the cost for one bottle and all this stuff uh, and how equipment is called you how bars cost you all this stuff when you understand uh the what behind of making wine i think then you have a be better decision if you want to go into this uh, 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 uh worldwide making I'll, i will i will complete this one and i'll, I'll end uh, with uh, with uh, as i said before do you want it really uh, secondly that you um, um, uh, that you have to make a living in the meantime when you build your winery this is very important if, if you don't have this space uh, I'm not sure that you can you can go on with it with this if you go to the commercial side um, uh, of course you have to have uh, some a bit a deep pocket <laughs> or, or rich <laughs> Yeah, or a rich uncle, <laughs> or something like this. Um, you have to plan well, uh, uh, play, play, uh, pl plan well uh, what you want, especially um, uh, and especially what you can do. Uh, you have to plan everything and to see what is your cap cap capability uh, to fulfill this this one. Uh, if you don't dream to do things, although everything tells you you cannot do it, but you still dream and do it, this is the right way, because obstacles is always to overcome. Uh, and the, the last thing, uh, start a pilot, go to another winery, start a pilot there with another winery, make your, your wine with his facility and all this stuff and fill it, understand it, take it two, three years. Um, and for me, it took like almost uh, six, five years until I could say to myself that I can do a good wine. Uh, today I'm making a very good wine, uh, I believe. And, uh, and this is a process and it never stops. Always you have to seek and go on <clears throat> to invent yourself again and to <clears throat> try in this last word. There's no right and wrong in making wine. Everything is right, everything is wrong. You have to find your own way and you have to make your own wine. Other wine will not, you will not stand out uh, with the competition that you have today, which is another topic that if you want to talk, we can talk about it. <laughs> That's so very true. Listen, there may not be right or wrong, but there's definitely good wine and wine that's not as good and your wine is definitely good. So whatever you're doing right or wrong, keep doing it. Um, I see a question here, um, but I, I will, people will have the ability to unmute themselves so uh, and ask their questions, but I'm going to just quickly read this one off the screen. So Greg here has been patient. He asks, what's your vision for the winery for the next five to 10 years? Um, at the moment, I think the goal is uh, to make a, a bit living out of it because I'm now in, in, in pension. So I need to complete what I get in the high tech. So for me at the moment, I want to have a salary for me and my wife. Uh, maybe uh, you don't know, but uh, my son a drawer, you can see it in the, in the, in the <clears throat> Facebook. And uh, he's a very talented uh, marketer guy, but he's now uh, working in the finance world. Um, also, I would like to include him in, 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 my, in my operation. Um, and uh, yes, uh, maybe uh, I have to um, uh, I think that I'm now in a, in a, in a, in a, in a um, I would say in a, in a point of time in my life that I have uh, really to decide should I go 
um, really marketing with going to 30,000 bottles or even more, or, or to stay as I am uh, now and uh, to keep on with this level. And uh, and uh, because, you know, I, I, I just, I just don't want to work harder than I worked in the high tech. So <laughs> I need to enjoy life a bit. So yeah, it's, it's a very good question. Uh, I don't think that people can answer this because, you know, wine, you can start with a demijohn and you get, at the end, you get to uh, 10,000 bottles. And believe me, I didn't plan it. That's why I'm trying to tell you from my mistake, plan it in advance. <laughs> if you want to go to this one, it will be even a shorter way. And, uh, and uh, the tips that I gave you, if you go by this, you make it shorter and you understand right away where you are and you can go to the, to fulfill your vision, your plan. So this is the, this is my uh, my situation at the moment. Of course, my vision is to have a very good wine, and um, I'm not sure that I'm going to go like the big ones. Uh, in Israel, it's like small wineries up to uh, 100,000 bottles a year. So if I'll be there, yeah, this is something that I'm uh, definitely think about it. Uh, at, at the moment, I'm not sure. I, ne- I need to uh, to uh, make the, this decision. It's not easy. Uh, it's a lot of money around it. Uh, for example, if you want to make uh, uh, this kind of 100,000, you have to invest in Israel at the moment. At least not, not talking about the facility itself, the, 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 the building. Only the equipment and everything that you need, it's like a million and million and a half shekel. Right. I know it's like something here. Yeah. So, so it's, not, it's not easy. I need to, to know how to fund it. Um, I'm making like a tiny winery, 10,000 is a tiny winery. And for, don't forget, the competition around me is like uh, between 250 to 400 uh, uh, small wine from 1,000 bottles to, uh, to uh, 1,500 or 30, uh, 15,000 and 30,000. So it's something I have to take into consideration. And just look what happened with the corona. Um, uh, um, um, some, some wineries are okay. Some wineries even increased their selling. Some wineries just closed. So it's something that you have to take this this uh, uh, risk management uh, to understand what you're doing. So yeah, from vision, yeah, 100,000 bottles. Uh, actually, stink thinking about it. Yeah. All right. Well, definitely keep us posted. We'll we'll help you with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> we're drinking. We're drinking it. <laughs> yeah.